it's very jarring to uh, see a text uh, from a relative or a friend from Gaza about some bombing that was a block away from their home and that they don't know if they're going to survive the night. And then on the flip side, I just have to like dial into a meeting and act like everything is normal. My name is Abdullah Al Aga. I'm a community organizer. Yeah, I think for the Palestinian community, what this week signifies is uh, is, a, is a year of us witnessing just the most horrific things happening to our friends and our families in Gaza. You know, the people of Gaza have been without water, without electricity, and uh, they've been without food, they've been without medical care, as virtually all hospitals in Gaza have been bombed. Uh, all of the students in Gaza have missed the entire last year of school. Um, virtually every university has been destroyed. Um, and you know, over 12,000 children have been killed. So it's been, it's been a really horrific year. And I think the worst part of it for uh, us as Palestinians here in America is really seeing uh, how not only we've been sort of forgotten and how we're sort of just an afterthought, but how we've been really vilified and, and demonized and you know this anti-Palestinian, anti-Muslim, anti-Arab rhetoric um, has really ramped up in a in a in a ferocious way, and there's just been a, a, a kind of unprecedented rise in uh, anti-Arab attacks. But we never hear anything about you know the rise and Islamophobia, the rise in anti-Arab hatred. I, I think for me, it, the, the, the effects um, that my family has experienced has really exacerbated this feeling that I have that um, you know my government and my country doesn't really care about me. Uh, two of my cousins were abducted by Israeli forces in the middle of the night, and they've spent you know, the better part of the last year languishing in Israeli prisons. And yet, I don't hear my government here talking about um, them. And, and they are, they're hostages. They're American hostages. Both my cousins, Hashem and Bara, are American citizens. Yeah, my relatives have been killed over the past year. It feels as though uh, there's not really a second thought given to the loss of Palestinian life. Our suffering, our pain, has been very normalized. This kind of anti-Arab hatred, this, this normalization of our suffering that we really experienced after 9-11, you know, over 20 years ago, it feels like deja vu. It feels like we're living that once again. Our stories aren't really told. Our side uh, of, of, of the story is something that's very often been forgotten or left to the wayside or, or even worse, framed as something that it's not. So I think it's really important for people to just kind of step out and, and, you know, try to ask some questions. Talk to your Arab neighbor, talk to your Muslim coworker. Um, just try to have a conversation, try to learn a little bit more about what's going on. Um, you know, if you know a Palestinian, just talk to them. As a community organizer, I've been organizing um, events here uh, for, for years now. And the, the, the way that our events have grown over the past year is really astounding. It's really beautiful to see how people have really embraced not just the Palestinian community, but also the Palestinian cause. A lot of the way that this is framed uh, is, is uh, you know, the, the peace process. How can we get peace? How can we have peace? And of course, everyone wants peace, uh, but peace without self-determination is worthless. And for 76 years, Palestinians have been fighting for justice and for self-determination. And we've been vilified and demonized for it. And it's been a struggle, but as I said, people are starting to wake up. People are starting to see the reality of what's happened over the past year, of what's been happening for the past 76 years. And while it is a very dark moment right now, I do feel very hopeful for the future.